Thanks, Katie, and uh, thanks, Stephen, for having us here tonight. So a little bit about just about the company and the name, because people will come up to me at conferences and they'll say, Care Architecture, do you like, do you guys like design hospitals or something? And I go like, well, you know, it was late on a Tuesday night and I was browsing through, you know, the available URLs, but seriously, um, what Care Architecture is about, it's, it's about design, the, the original mission was to design and enable technology based and, and community based systems of care to uh, care for the elderly and for the, for, for the chronically ill in their homes. And so what it really is about is how do we use technology to, you know, if you believe that it takes a village to care for people who are elderly and with chronic conditions in their homes, then really what we're about is enabling the village. And so that we go into the first slide. So how many people have, have heard the statistic from this summer? Was anybody particularly surprised by this? Was this this, this sort of a quantification of, of something we all know but hadn't necessarily known, we hadn't had a number attached to it. So we know that the Archives of Internal Medicine this summer published an article that indicated a study uh, based on a longitudinal assessment of survey data indicating that 43% of the, of, the, of the older Americans ages, ages 60 and above self-report as lonely. And that those who self-report as lonely are twice as likely, 25% of those who self-report as lonely are, are, have a functional limitation relative to 12% of the non-lonely population. So, you know, I've, I've been knocking around the whole telemonitoring, telehealth, remote patient monitoring space for a long time, and a lot of that is based on the assessment and, and, and monitoring of vital signs. But given my experience, what, what really always struck me was that, you know, there's, there's a lot of other stuff going on here, right? You know, there's the sort of the, the whole idea that there's the medical versus the non-medical. And what you, if you kept, kept peeling away the layers, what you always would, often would find is if you're working in a care coordination program is that beneath a medical need, 80% of the time is a non-medical issue. And in this case, a lot of the time, you know, what this study seem, validates is the idea that a lot of what's driving, you know, the illness burden and exacerbations and then people ending up prematurely in, in, in long-term care or dying is in fact social, social isolation and loneliness. And in my own case, I know I'm burning through my five minutes quickly, in my own case, what I worry about with my parents who are aging in place in Redlands, California, is I worry not so much about health risk factors, I worry about their isolation. So, as likely, the, the uh, seniors are often not likely to tell you that they're lonely. What they will tell you, so we've done a lot of research, <clears throat> we've talked to people, we've done the, you know, the infamous focus groups, um, and what we, we hear people say, they don't necessarily say I'm lonely, but they do say a bunch of other things, right? Like, like okay, here, here's the case in point. My 74-year-old um, mother-in-law moved to San Francisco about six months ago, and, and she, you know, she's alone in a new city, except she's got family there, and she's going like, I want to check out. A, I want to. I want to find a way to to do a novel writing class, and I want to join a fitness center and join an aquatics program, and I really want to meet new people. That's what she wants. So, what we're what we're saying it, with our what we're creating is a product, a, a technology platform, and a template for what amounts to a local social network with an emphasis on connecting seniors to to their communities, primarily to each other. In the vehicle of through 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 structured activities like classes, which could be anything from Tai Chi, to uh, the MGM back lot, to social activities such as book clubs and and walking groups, um, as well as connecting them to service trusted service providers who can further help enable enable that socialization, such as transportation for people who are starting to have tr problems driving at night and um, also to other people like home repair. So to put this into, so what we've done is we're working with uh, an aging services provider in Sacramento, California called Escaton. And they have an aging in place program called um, Live Well at Home. So we have applied an online infrastructure to Live Well at Home, you know, worked with them to make it a lot more efficient. It's been purely human powered, you know, a lot of phone based, you know, structuring of activity, taking reservations, um, putting out paper versions of class schedules, we've put that all online. We've aimed the program back towards a somewhat younger demographic, 
so that we've got a, a population that's very internet savvy, right? And in this, you know, the Pew now indicates that more than half of the senior population is online. And Eschaton, since we're aiming at middle income and above, it, their research indicates that 75% of those individuals are online. One of the things we're also doing in terms of working with Eschaton is actually doing orientations that, are, that, that help people learn how to use the portal. And if they actually even don't know how to use a computer, learn how to use computers. So what we're finding is that, so again, what we're doing is we've put the infrastructure online for them to be able to manage those classes and activities. We've started to put online the ability for people to actually go in and browse robust lists of service providers and actually use a form to push out a service request and initiate a service dialogue with that provider, which is something that you can't even do with Angie's List right now. And we've done this with very simple, very, you know, very flexible open source technology so that we have a sandbox on which we can iterate very, very rapidly as we learn. Now, there, the question becomes, how do you scale that? This just gives you a look at the portal that we put online with Eschaton for the Live Well at Home program. So the question we get from everybody is, great idea. How are you going to scale that? How are you going to sustain that? So really what we're doing, and we, you know, I understand this, this. This sounds a little bit like going to the moon. But it's really about we're, we're enabling the community. A lot of what you see, that the, the power in these, this, the, there are programs, are, how many people are familiar with what's called the village movement? Okay, so people, so the village movement is, is there are about 80 across the country right now, and these were organic, self-organized, or, you know, nonprofit organizations bringing seniors together. So a lot of it is about how do we use the technology to harness the power of these communities, and the, my five minutes are up. So that's what we're doing. Thank you. Yes, sir. partners that you're developing and the trusted providers and partners you're working with are actually trusted partners that can be <coughs> dependable. Okay, so there are a number of okay, so first of all there's there's a ten point process, right? Where we're we're doing everything from you know vetting better business bureau, vetting their licensure, <coughs> and vetting their processes for how they hire people, up to and including certifying that they do background checks. What we also do is what we're starting to put in place. So, so for instance, we have you know, six service providers that we've targeted with whom we've actually established the relationships with which you can push out forms. Right? So uh, we identified those six providers based on member feedback. So, and what we do as we go along right, is that we continue to put in, that's, that's where the scalability piece of it comes in is that if you keep putting in place the mechanisms for members to be able to drive that and create those feedback loops, that's where the, the power and the scalability comes in within the context of these, what amounts to a, 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 a walled garden community. A walled garden membership community, that's something I should point out. These are membership programs. Maybe one more question at the back. Yeah. I think that's an excellent question. And that's yeah, exactly just the question. For me, right? Her question is, how are we ensuring that seniors become not just recipients, but active participants? And again, that's what I mean in terms of as we move through this and start to introduce more sophisticated community and social networking tools, how do we enable certain leaders within the community to be able to increasingly take charge of forming, forming their experience for instance, it's one thing for us to work with Eschaton to have to, to put on a class. It's quite another thing to enable you know, leaders with wisdom within the community to be able to conduct their own classes. And those are the kinds of mechanisms that we'll be putting into place. 